Hello there, avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. All right, so today we are going to be talking about Miss Rule by Heather Walter. This is the second novel in the Malice duology. So that means it's also the conclusion. And I have to say, wow, <laughs> I absolutely loved uh, Malice. If you follow me, you already know that. I gave Malice five out of five stars. I mean, that was such a wonderful way to reinvent the story of Sleeping Beauty. I mean, I know a lot of people and I encounter them at work all the time, you know, working in a bookstore, customers like, oh boy, another retelling. Yes, there are tons of retellings out there, but you know what? Do not let that deter you from reading them because everyone's way of telling these stories is incredibly unique. Um, and I just read two this year, you know, I read Miss Rule and I read a, a Spindle Splintered, which I will be reviewing um, in the coming weeks, so don't worry. But please do not let that deter you from picking up another retelling just because, you know, there is already another retelling they're totally different. Miss Rule is nothing like anything else I've ever read. And I absolutely love it because of that. It's completely unique, 100% unique. And I loved, loved, loved that. I mean, I struggled a lot when I was writing this review just because I, there were so many things I loved about it. And I'm like, you know what? I just need to say what I need to say. And then anything I want to elaborate, I will in my podcast or my YouTube review. Because there was just so much I wanted to say, you know, I wanted to express just how much I love this book, you know, pretty much I should have just written a review saying, read this book, just read it. It's amazing. I mean, it really is a good conclusion to the series and the novel picks up, you know, a couple months after the events of um, Malice, when Alice, she's still trying to wake up her sleeping beauty, her one true love, right? And pretty much the person who enters into her um, life is another Vila. You know, you know from the last book, she is, Alice herself is Vila. And she's pretty formidable as far as Vila's go. I mean, she is powerful in her own right, not just because she has an ancient Vila living inside her as well. So I thought that was really, really cool. You know, you you see her talking to Alice. You see her trying. I mean, not Alice, to Aurora. (laughs) Sorry. You see her talking to Aurora, trying to wake her up. And then here walks in someone who shouldn't exist because the elves and the humans, they tried so hard to wipe out the Vila. Um, And the Vila themselves, you know, the history is they were elves who... Um, went dark. So they're kind of like dark elves. But they're a lot more human than elves. And I really do love the juxta- juxtaposition of the elves and the Vila in this novel. Um, and that goes towards the story building here. You know, centuries pass, or I think a century passes, and Alice is queen of Briar, but it's a Vila kingdom now. She has her royal court, she's got goblins, you know, she's got all sorts of dark, you know, what's considered dark fae goblins, um, dark fae creatures, right? So the Vila, it's an entirely new kingdom. And what I thought was really brilliant was when Aurora does wake up, instead of looking at her like, oh God, a human, because again, humans are responsible, are you know, in part responsible for their almost extermination. And it's not just any human that walks into them. It's it's the princess of the descendants of the woman who lied to the villa and pretty much did this whole thing, you know? So, but instead of just 
coming at her with such aggression. They're like, okay, we will be open-minded about this. And I love that because you're really seeing that just a position of the elves. I mean, you saw the elves in the first book if you've read the, the not the elves, the fae. You, you saw the fae, the elves, you know, the way that they, the fae, we're going to say the fae, the way that they just treated even the graces, even the humans, they just treated them poorly. Like, uh, like there's this, you know, thing following me around. I don't want it anymore. Like, get rid of it. Right. But they can't get rid of it because of a deal that was brokered between them. Right. And you just see the antagonism and you see the royal court and the way everyone just treated Alice, which so much distaste and so much I mean they abused her they did they emotionally physically mentally abused her they bullied her endlessly every single day I mean they treated her horribly so it's no wonder she has all this unpacked rage and why she let it out against all of the humans and the fae, you know, she's just like, this is my kingdom now. But the way her royal court gives Aurora the chance shows just how great the Vila are. Everyone was just like, we need to exterminate them. But why? You know, no one ever asked the question. It's because of a prophecy. It's also because the Vila were more powerful th than the fae, but they were also more open-minded you know just because they look like dark creatures doesn't mean they're evil it was actually really the fae who are more evil than them you know they are bigoted they are prejudiced they live in their racism and they you know have n no they don't want to change it um they don't want to change they're pretty happy with the status quo so I really did love the world building of Alice's court and the villa and how just they are angry and justifiably so they are justified in their anger but i love how open-minded they are you know i love seeing that these creatures that these beings these beings that are thought to be evil are very open-minded they are very thoughtful they are very considerate and i love that you know they speak their minds and they stand up for against all the injustices that have been done to their people. They, but they are also willing to compromise, and they show that with Aurora. And I loved, loved, loved that. I mean, I can't express that enough. I really did love the world building here, um, and I do also love the way Walter took the direction of Alice's character. I mean, you see, like I said, you see all that pent up rage and anger in her, but you also see how it's kind of twisted her outlook on things. You know, she's been betrayed. She's been abused. That's a lot. You know, that is a lot of emotion to unpack. And yeah, it's been a century, but those people that still, that abused her, I mean, they're still alive. They're still trying to kill her. And then you have to think, she never really got closure. She has acceptance now. She has a new family, a found family, and it's wonderful to see it come alive. But to see how she has changed and how she has evolved, but grows as well, you know, Aurora is there to kind of balance her out. And I like that they balance each other out. It's just like, okay, you need to see it from my perspective. And it's just like, okay, now see it from my perspective. And there's a lot of push and there's a lot of pull between those two. And it's realistic. I mean, this is how a relationship should work. It's just like, you need to listen to me. You can't just force yourself and your opinions on me, especially when it comes to Aurora. I mean, she's been asleep for a century. And her whole life has just changed in the blink of an eye, she fell asleep and the world was away and she woke up. A hundred years have passed. Everything she knows and loved is gone. So instead of just trying to 
for Alice, instead of just trying to like go back to how things were, I mean, that's what she's wants. She just keeps forcing it and forcing it. And Aurora's like, no, like, do you not understand what I'm going through right now? You need to listen to me. And then Alice doesn't really have this. She doesn't really want to, to listen to her. What she wants is to things to just be the same. She's like, no, things can't be the same because of everything that's happened, because of everything that has changed for Aurora. But I like that build in their relationship because it is realistic. You know, they have to learn to really listen to one another, to grow with one another. And they do, they are each other's best friend but even for Alice you know there are just some things she can't move on from and some things she has to work on for herself you know she does have to take that moment away from Aurora you know she does have to be re she does have to breathe and she does have to take a look at who she's become is she happy with who she's become and again, I really like that characterization for her. And I like those dynamics. And again, I love how even her own royal court, who has become, you know, so taken with Aurora, are just like, hey, look in the mirror. But he, not everyone. You know, there are the ones that are just like, I think you should dump that girl. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. But it's a really good, strong cast of characters, not just with Alice and Aurora. Pretty much everyone in the royal court, I absolutely love them because of this push and pull. I love the magic. I love the development. And I love how it concludes this story and this journey of Sleeping Beauty, of Aurora and her dark fairy. I loved it 100%. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this book five out of five stars. I mean, it wasn't, it was such a, well, I love Walter pretty much. She's amazing. This duology is amazing. Um, I can't, I can't stress that anymore. <laughs> I can't say any more other than that. It was, it was really well done. It really was. Um, so five out of five stars. If you want to purchase the book, please remember to purchase the book from your local bookseller or online book retailer. If money's tight, please check the book out from your local library. Um, there are other ways other than purchasing to support the author, like leaving a review online, um, or just sharing the book on your book talk or Instagram. And on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me here by liking this podcast, subscribing to it, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. Mm-hmm.